that has eluded me is now mine! Arise, most powerful one! Arise! I said, arise! Arise! Hi everyone, this is Mike from Junkie and Crafts and Builds, and this video is going to be an unboxing and impressions of G.I. Joe Classified Series, Dr. Mindbender. Now this figure was originally available during San Diego Comic-Con this year and it was a bit of a debacle to say the least. Um, Hasbro and originally had stated that they were going to be giving uh, QR codes to those who attended the, the convention. Um, then it came around that Saturday it was suddenly available for most everyone which is how I was, how I was able to pre-order this guy. Um, I we just came back from Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we had a great time with family and friends, and I was fortunate fortunate to see this guy arrive um, at my house. <clears throat> so, looking at the front of the box, it's a really really cool drawing and an interpretation of the doctor. Uh, cut all to get out, you know, not miss anything. Um, just really really neat, and I like this whole sleeve. Um, manner of which they've done things on the side he's number 43 and all these little stats they've been putting on classify which really doesn't mean much of anything but this this drawing back here is awesome I love this it's similar to what we have with Serpentor um, and it shows the doctor and Destro going through the process of getting all the greatest warriors and warlords and leaders of history to create Serpentor. Also, probably the indication of what happened with him. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool drawing. So, unlike Serpentor, this guy wasn't really uh, sealed. So we'll just slide this out. And again, the cool double helix uh, Cobra symbol, similar to what they had with Serpentor, um, a full full version of that split sleeve image. Again, just really really nice. So let's uh, let's split this open. I haven't done this yet, so let's see what I see what we got. <clears throat> okay. Oh, well, this is pretty cool. Um, so all the accessories are. Exposed minus the little pieces here. Um, th these are covered with tape and across here, but everything about him is is ready and to come out of the shell here. So I, I like it. I like the the little attention to details. You know, they have Mars up here, um, and just you know, initially it just looks cool. Um, but not as, not as, you know, he, he's not supposed to be as imposing as Serpentor, but, you know, just the presentation seems a little, uh, underwhelming. Uh, I wish I would have got this guy first before Serpentor, but still great presentation. And what we need to do now is get him out of here and let's look at accessories. Out of the packaging, here are Dr. Mindbender's assortment of accessories. Starting from left to right, we have these two weapons. Um, to me, I think they're part of his portable uh, brain scanner, brain scrambler. Um, both are black plastic with silver accents, and they both have these little uh, plugs at the end. And that is used with this flexible rubber hose. You know, pliable, similar to what we have with with a blowtorch. Just kind of plug it right in, as such. And the other end is going to go into this. Now, this, like I said, I believe this is part of his uh, portable brain scanner. But this little peg here will plug onto the figure, which I'll show you later on. So that's really cool. He comes with a pistol, standard, uh, you know, weapon for a mad scientist, of course. Um, it does have a, a hole here in the barrel for a blast effect, so that's really great. And then we also have what I call his genetic uh, his genetic extractor. 
Got a little sample bottle up here painted in silver. Again, this is all black plastic, um, but looks really cool. So I imagine a needle coming out there as he uh, plugs into a, his victim. And then we move over to the more of the mad scientist part of things. So these accessories have a lot of play value. And we'll start off here with this skull. Um, really cool with the wrapping around it, mummified. It's got a little uh, crack here in the center. And what you can do is this actually comes out. And then with the next accessory, which is this brain that has a really, really detailed uh, connection point here. But you can go ahead and put that into the skull in that port. And let's see if it actually fits better. Uh, neither way fits perfect or great. But then you can put the skull over it and boom. Now the skull has a brain. So, very cool. And we also have, for the mad geneticist, we have a hand or claw as it were. That I'm sure he used, you know, to extract DNA for his creation, which is Sepentor. And then we have these two containers. This small one here has a removable top. And this is the perfect size to plug in that brain. And again, you got to kind of give it a little bit of a push. Put that top on. And then it's in place. And then what we have here are these... Tiny little things that you will most likely lose, but they plug in to these four points on this little uh, display. So let me get those on here. So, and what I will probably do after this is I will probably glue these in place because I know for a fact that I will lose them in a second. But there we go. All four plugged in. They all have a little white accent on the end to simulate, you know, maybe it's like electrodes going through the brain and keeping it alive. Um, but really cool. And then the final accessory we have is a larger one here, which of course will house the claw. So we just slide that into place, put that on top, and boom. Perfect displays, great accessories for this figure fit in perfectly with the profile of Dr. Mindbender and his experiments. Um, so really cool. But what are accessories without the figure? So let's look at him now. And here's the figure. And he doesn't disappoint. This is the latest rendition of, of Dr. Mindbender. His original release was in 1986. Then he was redecoed into more extreme yellow colors for Battlecore in 1993. And the last rendition, which more closely aligned his appearance to his animation model, was with the G.I. Joe's Collectors Club, and that was in 2014. So I just want to take a moment and go through his profile and his bio <clears throat> in both the comics and in the cartoon. So Dr. Mindbender was originally called Dr. Bender. He was an orthodontist. And what he was doing was to build a machine that would help relieve the pain of his patients as he worked on them. He tested this device on himself, and unfortunately, it turned him mad. His hatred increased tenfold, and therefore he aligned himself directly with Cobra and used his knowledge to help in their dastardly deeds. He's a master of interrogation and mind control, and he also has knowledge in genetics, cloning, and cyberware. His first appearance was in the G.I. Joe comic number 44 as Dr. Brainwave. He's the uh, primary science officer after the original science officer for Colbert, Dr. Venom, was killed in action. Um, his main claims and his desires was to continuously modify the Brainwave scanner, which he made a portable version of. And he also was known for creating the BATS, or the Battle Android Troopers, and of course, he went across the globe with Destro to gather genetic material to create Sorpentor. Now, interesting note with Sorpentor is that in the comics, not only was Sorpentor given the genetic code of a lot of 
warlords and generals throughout time, but he also had the genetic material of Storm Shadow. Uh, at that time, Storm Shadow was severely wounded and near death, so they took his they took his genetic material to incorporate into Serpentor. Now, interestingly enough, in the GI Joe cartoon, when the in the five part miniseries Rise Serpentor Rise, instead of using Storm Shadows, they actually used the genetic material of Sergeant Slaughter. Now, the thing is, he Sergeant Slaughter actually destroyed his sample before the cloning process could be completed. Um, he was used in place of Sun Tzu, um, and because of that, Serpentor is always known to have his impatience and, and prone to grandiose outbursts and such. So, one way we can always remember, and it's not really the best way, but in the comics, Dr. Mindbender actually died. Um, this happened during the Cobra Civil War storyline, at which Serpentor and a clone, uh, Crimson Guard, actually impersonated a Cobra Commander, and these two factions were fighting each other on Cobra Island. Now, Dr. Mindbender aligned himself with Serpentor up until Serpentor was killed by Zartan. And then he went over to the uh, clone's side. Unfortunately, they were all forced into a, a cavern which was collapsed on him and he unfortunately didn't survive. He died of botulism. Let that sink in. So anyway, that's a little bit of a bio of, of this character. Um, so let's get in close and actually give him a look-see here. So starting with this face sculpt, it is like spot on to what you imagined and it looks so close to what the uh the image on the front of the screen on the front of the box was like so this is a translucent plastic over the eye monocle but just like you know the the big mustache the, you know the pointed uh eyebrows yeah this guy i mean it's it's uncanny i have to give the uh the design team props i mean they even put like little ridges here at the back of his of his skull to simulate you know <laughs> if you want to call it neck skin or, or you know back of his head here um so going down again he he's cut all get out here he's got this really cool soft goods cape which has, has a simulated leather effect on it here and even they reversed it for the back when you pull it up over the over here for a high raised look now unfortunately what has been common amongst this release is that as you can see here, the dye used on this soft goods has bled over onto his shoulders on both sides here. So I'm going to take take a little bit of a, you know, cleaner and try to get that get that scuff off. But yeah, I mean, it still looks really cool. We're getting close here for G Tony, and you can see like you know just the detail, the silver that's painted along here. It looks really sharp. You know, we got this the purple armbands and these little gaunt, you know, gauntlets. The gloves here have some texture on them. You know, just really, really cool. Um, you can see that it goes around the back and actually mine kind of bends around here. So I don't know if that's a uh, part of it or not. Um, I do have a little bit of a gap on this side here where the piece was glued on, but you know, that's a small item. This is a soft pliable plastic around here. Um, purple texture pants, the, te the holster here has a texture look and a silvered, silver painted buckle along here. Then we have the high, cu high cut boots, again that texture all the way around and we got the accent silver on the buckle here. So I mean, he's just nice, I mean he's, he's, it's just. A more detailed version of the original release. Now, articulation, as most G.I. Joe classified male bucks are. His head is on a ball joint, turn, look down a little, it's just a little tight, you can look up, across here. So shoulders can go up to this far, right? 
It's got a elbow or bicep rotation. Got a little bit of a butterfly going across here. He's got double jointed elbows, pinless. And that's the same on the other side. Wrists, we have the open and close in and out portion on this hand. On this side, we have the up and down motion. Okay. You can see a little bit of extra detail in regards to the fact that they, uh, they put a little skin to expose between the, uh, the uh, forearm gauntlet and the gloves. We have a decent ab crunch. Again, with uh, the metal crossing around here, kind of puts a little bit of limit. We've got waist rotation a little bit. Going down to the legs. Now, when I was originally manipulating this guy and I did the drop down, it kind of gave me a little bit of a creak. So I'm a little nervous with this side, but you can see he can get his leg up to there. Um, back, we've got a thigh cut along here. We have pinless legs as well as pinless arms. And we have a very, very tight uh, double jointed knee. And then we have ankle rotation. We have toe tilt up, toe tilt down. All the articulation that you really need. So let's get him, uh, let's get him accessoried up. And here he is armed and ready to decimate through science. So I have the gene extractor or DNA extractor here, and I hooked up the portable brainwave scanner. Um, his hands, unlike some of the other GI Joe figures I have where they were really hard to get around, his fingers are pretty pliable. So it's easy to kind of get these in and out without having to bend the, the grip or anything and worry about that breaking. Um, I ran the hose through this little uh, piece here on his holster that kind of gives me a little bit of a a way to manipulate that around and also helps flare out the uh, trench coat cape, so to speak. And then the portable tube or uh, canister hooks into this little peg right there and it goes in really secure like, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But uh, yeah, the only th you can't put all of his accessories together and have him carry them all obviously, but I think that looks really, really cool, really imposing. Um, and like I said, he's ready to, to do some mad science. So final impressions of the G.I. Joe Classified series Dr. Mindbender. I like him. I think he's a good complement to Serpentor. And I'm glad they were both released this year. Um, again, he looks amazing. The detail is there. And I again, I had to commend the... Uh, the Hasbro design team for the Classified series, they make some very beautiful action figures. Um, articulation is on par with most other figures. Um, I just wish, like most other collectors, that they would come with more hand options. Um, you know, like I said, the, the accessories are something that enhances the figure. And, um, you know, if you can get hold of them, I would, uh, I would highly recommend them. So that's all I have for right now. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you like the pictures. Bye.